Lately, there have been a lot of articles suggesting that COVID-19 has been good for the environment. There are pictures of cities without smog, highways without cars, and animals reclaiming nature, many of which in the latter case turned out to be fake. But will any of this really matter when the world returns to normal? In this video, I want to zoom out from the day-to-day -day news cycle and try to answer that question, and also try to understand whether COVID-19 will be good for climate change over the long run. Many scientists expect emissions to drop by somewhere between 4 and 8% in 2020 as a result of the economic slowdown caused by COVID-19. And at first glance, that looks good. For a sense of perspective, that's about as many emissions as India produces in a year. But if we zoom out on this graph and look at global emissions over the last 120 years, we'll see that this relationship between emissions reductions and economic slowdowns isn't anything new. Emissions have fallen seven times in the last 120 years, and all of them were a result of some kind of economic slowdown. So that means that when the economy eventually recovers, we should expect emissions to rise again. And if the recovery is anything like the one that followed the Great Recession, the rebound could be worse than the dip. If we return to that graph of historical emissions and zoom in to 2009, we'll see that emissions declined by 400 million tons, or about 1%. But then the next year, they shot back up by 1.7 billion tons, or about 5%. One of the main reasons that emissions rose so quickly after the Great Recession is because governments around the world passed stimulus packages that funded infrastructure projects. And while those projects created jobs and spending, they also required a lot of cement and fossil fuels. But history doesn't have to repeat itself. One of the ways that countries could avoid a emissions intense recovery is by passing green stimulus packages. A green stimulus package would basically solve two problems at once. It would reduce unemployment in the same way that a typical stimulus package would by creating funding for infrastructure projects that generate jobs, but it would differ in that those jobs would focus on decarbonization. So rather than fund a highway, it would fund something like a zero emissions hyperloop. And those projects could have long-lasting effects. They could help break the relationship between economic growth and emissions, both during the recovery and also over the long run. And some countries are already doing this. In April this year, South Korea's Democratic Party won a landslide election when they ran on a green stimulus plan that promised to get the country to zero emissions by 2050 and generate economic activity. Now, whether other countries will follow remains unclear. But one thing is certain, without substantial changes to things like our transportation systems and the ways that we produce products, all these changes that we've seen in the last few months will be short-lived. And if that's the case, then it won't be long before the smog returns, highways clog up again, and we continue to accelerate towards environmental collapse. <laughs>